Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Ilyes. I'm uh, from Runtime. Uh, today, I'm delighted to introduce ERCX, which is our tool suite for fast checking of ERC tokens, for checking the performance and also the security of those tokens. All right, so I'll start directly by telling you what ERCX can provide you with. Essentially, it provides you with two features. The first one is to let you evaluate the quality of any token that is deployed out there either on mainnet or on testnet, such as Sepolia and Guerli. And the second one is to let you build better tokens by providing you with a complete test suite that allows you to check the conformance and the security properties of your token. Um, we believe that ERCX is mainly purpose to developers, but it is also the perfect tool for an investor or a token auditor. Let me tell you how. So an investor in front of a token, she's asking herself the question, should I put my money in that token? Is this a safe token? And she's rightfully afraid of scams, rock pool, or even honeypots. And so we need tools to evaluate the technical quality of tokens, and not only economics and transfer and um, such kind of things. Now, for developers, um, I am a developer myself, and I want to spend the least time possible testing. And I want instead to focus my time and spend my time on ensuring that my software or my token is realizing its mission, and it has all the important properties. And also, if we are a beginner developer for tokens, we are not sure from which tokens to inspire from. There are so many tokens out there, and just by reading the source code, it's very difficult to know whether some token has a special property that I need and I want to integrate in my token. So this is where ERCX comes in, with its complete test suite for ERC20 and ERC4626 tokens, by letting you know whether any token has some special property in it. And so, as a developer, you save a lot of time uh, by running directly our test suite. Now, uh, if you are an auditor, our test suite comes also shipped as a Foundry library. So it is a GitHub repo that you can download. And as I said, it's very comprehensive in the test that it provides. I will say a few words about it in a minute. It executes very fast, meaning that if you have a token to test, you can get the result in 32 seconds to one minute. But as an auditor, you will be interested to know that it is also customizable and extendable. Customizable in the sense that you can parameterize, you can uh, each study special scenario for your token, special initial state or special value for fees, for instance. So you can parameterize your test suite, but you can also extend it. That, it. that means that you can add your own test to our test suite. And so customize this to the special token that you are auditing. Now, about our test suite, as I was saying, we support two standards, ERC20, ERC4626. We have uh, 116 and 175 tests for those standards. I think maybe slightly more. We are adding tokens, uh, we are adding tests every week. Um, so we have decided to structure our test suite in two different levels to organize uh, things and also better reflect what kind of properties is checked by each, uh, each test. So the first level is the ABI level. So this is kind of the lowest level where you have syntactic check on the signature of functions. So we check the parameters, their types, um, but also the return of those functions and the state mutability. So this is really like level zero of, of checking. We have then a minimal level, uh, which checks for properties that are deemed as mandatory in the standard. That means that it went through the EIP20 standard and those properties are stated with a must in, uh, in, in the requirements. We have also recommended level for recommendation. They comes with the should. And so that's what we extracted from the EIP standard. But we went beyond that. We added new levels. Uh, we are lucky to have in runtime at runtime verification uh, expert auditors and security experts. So we work with them on asking them what are the important properties a token should have. And since they have seen a lot of hacks, they have audited a lot of tokens, they told us what are the important properties from a security perspective to have in a token. So this is where the desirable uh, level comes from. So we have kind of 
40 to 50 tests, additional tests that uh, are in this level. And finally, we have add-on and fingerprint. Add-on is for tests that involve behavior with functions that go beyond the standard, like minting, burning, um, transfer proxy, batch transfer, you name it. So this is going slightly beyond ERC20 standard. And uh, finally, we have fingerprint for properties that are neither good nor bad to have, but which corresponds to implementation choices made by the token implementer. So typically there, you would find properties such as um, whether the token support the infinite approval pattern. And yeah, so that's for the fingerprint. We wanted to compare ERCX, where it stands from. There are a lot of tools um, available already. And uh, if, you, if you look at this table, so you have in lines several dimensions um, that are relevant for users. So first, in the terms of the number of tests, we are not the ones with the most tests, but those tests are parametric, meaning that instead of testing one behavior, we feed the test with a lot of parameter values in order to explore as much, pos as much behavior as possible for, um, for the test. Um, I think for this table, uh, Flitter added just recently the um, parametric fuzzing, um, so I would, I would put a green, uh, a green uh, background here. So the other dimension, as you can see, is whether we allow testing from source code, uh, testing from an address, meaning that we test also deploy token. We allow testing from the console, uh, from a website, from an API, a VS Code plugin. And we also had engineers evaluating the usability of uh, those tools, and uh, uh, we categorized them as follows. So as you can see, we are checking uh, all the marks. So that's for usability and ease of use, um, you might say. But most importantly, uh, a test with our bug finding tool is uh, aimed to find bugs. So this is what you would term as completeness in terms of uh, verification. And we wanted to evaluate that too. So we partner with uh, Certera and their tool, Gambit, to, in order to generate mutants. So mutants are syntactic modification that you bring to a to uh, some software in general in order to introduce bugs. And the idea is that you start from some software which is perfect. Um, here we started from an implementation of uh, ERC20 that meets all the criteria. And you're generating mutants. So we started by generating 100 mutants and we work with Certera in order to have reduce the set of mutants to a set of uh, 51 mutants that are semantically different. So you know that each of the mutant is representing a different kind of errors that a developer can make. So we tested um, those um, using those mutants, and initially we had something like 92, 93, I don't remember, um, score mut uh, mutation score, meaning that we killed 93% of the mutant. And we work with also with Certera in order to add more tests in order to achieve perfect um, scoring in that respect. Um, so what does it mean? It means that up to our mutation model, up to our um, representation of possible mistakes that a developer can make, you can be sure that ERCX will catch those bugs in an ERC20. Um, and of course, we compare that uh, with uh, the other tool and um, checked uh, how they perform, and you can see the result here. All right, so we have a great test suite, and we have also a huge database of tokens. We evaluated the RCX on um, more than 200K tokens. So I believe we have the most comprehensive database of ERC tokens. And we wanted to ask questions that are kind of different from what you can find, for instance, of, on ETH scans, which are economics and statistics about tokens. And I believe also it is the opportunity to understand the ecosystem of tokens from different perspectives. So using our database and using our evaluation of our comprehensive database, we are now able to um, answer questions such as those represented on the slide. So which tokens meet the standard and to which proportion? Um, to what extent the standard is respected by the tokens that are deployed? Um, which properties are most respected? And also, you can start asking questions about correlation between tokens. You can, um, yeah, correlation between tokens and properties. Between tokens, uh, it means that if a token is, has a certain signature in terms of passing or test, and you look at another token that has a similar property, and you now see that the first token get hacked or has a problem, 
then you can know that the other token, which is closed, which is correlated, has the same behavior, will likely have the same problems. And similarly, you can look at properties. What are the properties that are most common with tokens? And what are the properties that are opposed to each other? So I think it's an interesting opportunity to have a different kind of understanding of the ecosystem of tokens. Right, so I hope now you really want to check ERCX and uh, would like to uh, try it. So today we offer three interfaces. The first one is a website where um, we can go, ercx.runtimeverification.com. You can test the token by just copy-pasting either some address or some website. I will demo it in a minute. We have also an API if you want to interact with the token in an automated way. And so you add slash API to the previous URL I just said. And for developers, we have also a VS Code plugin where you can generate the test and execute them while you are implementing your token. All right, so if you want to uh, check, I have this uh, QR code. I will now move to the demo, showing you um, how, to, uh, how these different interfaces behave. So I have a first video demonstrating a website and in particular the testing from an address. So you go typically to your favorite address provider such as Zikterscan, you copy paste some address. So this is the address of uh, Tether. You select the network to which this token is deployed. So as your site, we support mainnet, Sepoli and Goali. And you just click test. And then you get a report. So this is the report about Tether. Um, and you can see that this report is composed of several parts. First, you have some features. You can bookmark the token so you can create an account, save the tokens. You can create lists of tokens also that you, of your favorite tokens. You can report some problems. And then you have some uh, very useful information. So first information is whether the token is behind the proxy um, and the behavior might likely change. And then you have some information such as whether the token implements some of the functions uh, in the standard, such as name, symbol, decimal, etc. Then you have a summary of the test result, like I presented before, I sorted according to level. So uh, for instance, here we can see that um, Tether passes the minimal and the recommended test, so it's conformant to the standard, but it doesn't pass our test suite, meaning that there are 10 desirable properties that Tether should have and doesn't. Um, and then you have, uh, in the second place, the um, kind of a tabulated view where you have details about the test and the results per level. So you can see here uh, which properties are not met by the Tether token. So um, this way you can really have a very precise understanding of, of the behavior. Fingerprint, add-on, um, and also you have a test logs with the output of uh, or um, tool so that you can save that and uh, really see the details. So if, for instance, you have um, a violated property, you would get the counterexample values that would allow you to reproduce that behavior. And finally, in the third part of this report, you have general token information, so that you can find in um, a lot of websites. Um, but more importantly, you have a score. So this is what you can find uh, from this place, a global score meaning what is the ratio of passing tests. So here we have 84% of our tests that passed, but also a topic score, meaning that we have categorized our test. So for instance, the first category is approval, which contains all the tests involving the approval function of the token. So you really have a dedicated view according to uh, the topic and how um, the uh, token behave. And for instance, here for the zero address, you have no test that passed. So you know that it's uh, not behaving very well regarding the handling of the zero address. So that's testing from address. We all, as I said, we also support testing from source. And if you want to try it, you can try it on our website. So you will go to the right-hand side part of our website. Here is an example of very basic and correct implementation, conformant implementation to the token. We select the class, click test, and very similarly, after a few seconds, get a report. So you can see that this is kind of a very uh, nice tokens. You have the same um, element uh, to that uh, on that interface. And as you can see, we passed the minimal recommended ABI test, but not the desirable. 
And what is nice with uh, when you are implementing uh, and when you are testing with source code is that you can modify the source code and reevaluate, relaunch the evaluation from our website. Okay, so that's for our website. We have also a VS Code plugin if you are a developer. So you are developing your token, you go to this test view of um, VS Code and you have this button, ERCX generate test. You have this uh, very, um, I mean, if you are familiar with unit testing, you have this view where you have all the tests on the left, where you can run all the tests or an individual test by running, uh, by just clicking on the button and you have the result. So you can see here that you have uh, result and also we try to point you to where is the test failing in your uh, token. So, and as you can, as you could see in, uh, in, in the, on the screen, you have also an explanation of why uh, it's failing. So you have what is expected on the token and what is the actual behavior. So you really have an, in, an understanding and an explanation of why you fail the test. So that was for the uh, VS Code plugin. Uh, I will now um, just mention that we have also an API, as, as I said. Um, I guess you know what an API is, but we have, uh, I will just mention that we have endpoints for managing token lists to add and suppress tokens, and also, of course, to run our evaluations. All right. Okay, so I will, um, very briefly conclude this presentation by telling you where we want to go. So we are aiming to have a one-stop solution to evaluate ERC contracts. We are working in several directions. The first one is to add more tests. We are adding tests almost every week. Um, we are aiming to support more standards. 721 and 1155 are, are coming. We in augment our database with tokens and also supporting features. So we want to add features to the tool that helps developers uh, implement better token. So we have also several projects ongoing. So the first one is about interactively writing ERC uh, tokens. So this is for education if you are a beginner developer. Um, so having such a comprehensive test suite allows us to really have tutorialized way of creating tokens. We have ways of check tokens, so this is ERC check. And also the uh, set of mutants that I mentioned earlier um, form a benchmark that we want to offer to the community so that you can evaluate your uh, bug finding tool and uh, compare to uh, other tools. All right, so that's the end of my presentation. I will conclude by mentioning that we have a workshop um, starting in uh, a bit more than 10 minutes. Uh, it's on Lincoln stage um, and we have prepared for you hands-on ways to try ERCX. Um, along three activities. So the first one is to test your favorite deploy token. So we will guide you uh, on to um, testing the token and analyzing the report. Then we have provided you with buggy uh, ERC20 tokens so you can see how you can check those tokens and find the bugs, correct the bugs, and then reevaluate to, to make sure that you have corrected the bugs. And the third activity is an activity where you can use our API in order to build a token evaluator based on Python um, and build batch evaluation of tokens. So that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. And I'm looking forward to your questions. Awesome. Thank you for that. And like you alluded to, he's got to run downstairs, uh, but we do have time for a couple questions. So if anyone has one, feel free to raise your hand. I can bring the mic over. I, I had one I wanted to bring up. So uh, look, just looking at the website of that, you talked a lot about how this applies itself from the developers kind of portal into this world. Uh, but you also talk about from an investor's perspective, yeah. this can provide you know, effectively a safety net of sorts. So uh, I'm curious kind of at a high level, how you see like practically within the user experience of Web3, uh, this sort of tool being integrated to kind of provide that safety net. And then maybe more specifically with Uniswap V4 coming out, I'm just curious if there's any specific like new ways to kind of integrate that, that are opened up. Yeah. So Token investors have less technical experience, I would say, than developers, so we need to provide them with tools with abstraction. So this is why we are working on this scoring mechanism. So this is also what we are exploring. How, um, how can we abstract? So we have 115 or 
more than 100 tests. So it's unlikely that an investor is going to look at that. So we need to aggregate those results. And we have also on working on kind of special tests dedicated to scams and uh, honeypots and rock pools. And I think we need to simplify. So I think the website is a great way for, for investors to enter the game and to get some quick understanding. Um, partnerships also are important with those websites, Etoscan and, and you name it. But also we can uh, integrate within Wallet. So an idea would be that, um, um, well, you're about to send some money to some address and you could imagine that you have some check mark in the um, in the um, in the wallet to to to, check, to, to make sure that uh, it's going okay. Yeah. So these are the possible ways. We are not there yet. We are working on that, but um, these are the possible applications. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone got any other questions? Last chance. Feel free to raise your hand. Awesome. Thank you so Thank much. You. Well, finally, yeah. it's down in Lincoln uh, in 10-ish minutes. Yeah. See you at the workshop. Thank you.